Dynamisms. Energy transformations become organized as typical behavior patterns that characterize a person throughout a lifetime. Sullivan called these behavior patterns dynamisms, a term that means about the same as traits or habit patterns. Dynamisms are of two major classes, first, those related to specific zones of the body, including the mouth, anus, and genitals, and second, those related to tensions. This second class is composed of three categories the disjunctive, the isolating, and the conjunctive. Disjunctive dynamisms include those destructive patterns of behavior that are related to the concept of malevolence, isolating dynamisms include those behavior patterns, such as lust, that are unrelated to interpersonal relations, and conjunctive dynamisms include beneficial behavior patterns, such as intimacy and the self-system. Malevolence Malevolence is the disjunctive dynamism of evil and hatred, characterized by the feeling of living among one's enemies. It originates around ages two or three years when children's actions that earlier had brought about maternal tenderness are rebuffed, ignored, or met with anxiety and pain. When parents attempt to control their children's behavior by physical pain or reproving remarks, some children will learn to withhold any expression of the need for tenderness and to protect themselves by adopting the malevolent attitude. Parents and peers then find it more and more difficult to react with tenderness, which in turn solidifies the child's negative attitude toward the world. Malevolent actions often take the form of timidity significant intimate relationships prior to puberty are usually boy-boy or girl-girl friendships, according to Sullivan. Mischievousness, cruelty, or other kinds of a social or antisocial behavior. Sullivan expressed the malevolent attitude with this colorful statement, Once upon a time everything was lovely, but that was before I had to deal with people. Intimacy. Intimacy grows out of the earlier need for tenderness but is more specific and involves a close interpersonal relationship between two people who are more or less of equal status. Intimacy must not be confused with sexual interest. In fact, it develops prior to puberty, ideally during pre-adolescence when it usually exists between two children, each of whom sees the other as a person of equal value. Because intimacy is a dynamism that requires an equal partnership, it does not usually exist in parent-child relationships unless both are adults and see one another as equals. Intimacy is an integrating dynamism that tends to draw out loving reactions from the other person, thereby decreasing anxiety and loneliness, two extremely painful experiences. Because intimacy helps us avoid anxiety and loneliness, it is a rewarding experience that most healthy people desire. Lust. On the other hand, lust is an isolating tendency, requiring no other person for its satisfaction. It manifests itself as autoerotic behavior even when another person is the object of one's lust. Lust is an especially powerful dynamism during adolescence, at which time it often leads to a reduction of self-esteem. Attempts at lustful activity are often rebuffed by others, which increases anxiety and decreases feelings of self-worth. In addition, lust often hinders an intimate relationship, especially during early adolescence when it is easily confused with sexual attraction. Self-System The most complex and inclusive of all the dynamisms is the self-system, a consistent pattern of behaviors that maintains people's interpersonal security by protecting them from anxiety. Like intimacy, the self-system is a conjunctive dynamism that arises out of the interpersonal situation. However, it develops earlier than intimacy, at about age 12 to 18 months. As children develop intelligence and foresight, they become able to learn which behaviors are related to an increase or decrease in anxiety. This ability to detect slight increases or decreases in anxiety provides the self-system with a built-in warning device. The warning, however, is a mixed blessing. On one hand, it serves as a signal, alerting people to increasing anxiety and giving them an opportunity to protect themselves. On the other, this desire for protection against anxiety makes the self-system resistant to change and prevents people from profiting from anxiety-filled experiences. Because the primary task of the self-system is to protect people against anxiety, it is the principal stumbling block to favorable changes in personality. However, 
believed that personality is not static and is especially open to change at the beginning of the various stages of development. As the self-system develops, people begin to form a consistent image of themselves. Thereafter, any interpersonal experiences that they perceive as contrary to their self-regard threatens their security. As a consequence, people attempt to defend themselves against interpersonal tensions by means of security operations, the purpose of which is to reduce feelings of insecurity or anxiety that result from endangered self-esteem. People tend to deny or distort interpersonal experiences that conflict with their self-regard. For example, when people who think highly of themselves are called incompetent, they may choose to believe that the name-caller is stupid or, perhaps, merely joking. Sullivan called security operations a powerful break on personal and human progress. Two important security operations are dissociation and selective inattention. Dissociation includes those impulses, desires, and needs that a person refuses to allow into awareness. Some infantile experiences become dissociated when a baby's behavior is neither rewarded nor punished, so those experiences simply do not become part of the self-system. Adult experiences that are too foreign to one's standards of conduct can also become dissociated. These experiences do not cease to exist but continue to influence personality on an unconscious level. Dissociated images manifest themselves in dreams, daydreams, and other unintentional activities outside of awareness and are directed toward maintaining interpersonal security. The control of focal awareness, called selective inattention, is a refusal to see those things that we do not wish to see. It differs from dissociation in both degree and origin. Selectively inattended experiences are more accessible to awareness and more limited in scope. They originate after we establish a self-system and are triggered by our attempts to block out experiences that are not consistent with our existing self-system. For example, people who regard themselves as scrupulously law-abiding drivers may forget about the many occasions when they exceeded the speed limit or the times when they failed to stop completely at a stop sign. Like dissociated experiences, selectively inattended perceptions remain active even though they are not fully conscious. They are crucial in determining which elements of an experience will be attended and which will be ignored or denied.